Hi guys. I'm ready for bed. The kids are sleeping. My niece and my nephew. So, I have my niece and nephew for a week now. It's been a week since I have them. They're with me for two weeks. So, they will be going home next week. I wish they could stay longer. They could stay longer if they want to, you know. Um, I want to talk about depression. Um, I was told that it's taboo, somewhat of a taboo in Jamaica. People don't talk about it. And the noise you hear in the background is my um, kettle. I drink tea at night, so that's what put me to sleep. I have to take tea, make tea at night and I have to have on a pair of socks. <laughs> I'm used to those things. I've been drinking tea from I was 16. I can't go to bed without my tea. Uh, I have friends that said I'm spoiled um, because I have to have tea and I have to have on socks and I have to have my pillow and I have to have a special blanket. But that's not spoiled. That's just what makes me comfortable. When I go out, I bring them with me. So yeah, I have a bag packed with that. Um, <laughs> I have a OCD, oh, what do you call Obs obsessive compulsive disorder as well. So everything has to be neatly done. Um, I like when you're doing something, you do it just once, you don't have to go back over it because, you know, you can't do one thing twice. I mean, yeah, we can, it's life. But anyways, depression. Depression is real, y'all. I have, I've suffered from depression after, I think my third child. Because I, I get pregnant every year, I pop them out every two years. So when, when uh, my first child, Tara, was one I'm, i was pregnant with nastasia then i have nastasia when Tara turns two a month later i have tasia then a year later i pregnant with Nef with angelina then two years later angelina was born a year later i was pregnant with hendrix two years after that hendrix was born so i have Tara, which is um 20 now nastasia which is 80 now angelina 69 hendrix is 14 so having those kids two years apart every year i get pregnant it's it's it it, it causes you to be depressed i had a meltdown i my husband is always at work you know he, he's a doctor he's an OBGYN, and he's always at work he's on call and he never have time for the family so i never have anyone to talk to I'm not that type of a friendly person where, back then, where I would go to the clinic and I'll meet a friend and talk to her and, and exchange motherhood and all of that. I was never like that. I'm always going in and coming back out without a friend, you know, just the nurses and the doctors. So, so I'm making my mentee from my cup. So, um, I suffer from depression because I have no one to talk to. Now, depression is real and I've noticed that a lot of mothers, a lot of people are not used to talking about the depression. Kids give you depression. In a toxic relationship or a relationship where you are talking to your partner and he does not answer you, it's like you're talking to a wall. It best you talk to a wall. It best you have a relationship with a wall because if you're talking to someone, a partner, and he's unresponsive, it makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. Say that to say this. I suffer from depression. I try killing myself and my kids. I fill my minivan with gas. I throw the three kids in one night. I forgot the date, but I know it was in July. And um, my son was about three months old. And I had a friend in Montauk, Long Island. And I live in Long Island in um, Belrose. Not Belrose, sorry, Rocket, which is in Belmont Racetrack. Belmont, behind Belmont Racetrack. And um, I almost killed myself. I was driving and I was just crying. I wanted to stop the car. 
in front of a tractor trailer, but I couldn't because I keep on looking in the rearview mirror and my four kids, and they were sleeping because it was nighttime. My husband saw the signs. There's mention, there's times I've mentioned it that I'm not feeling well and I feel like killing myself. He never believed me. He's always busy. Never take me serious. So that night, I went out and I was crying. So I called my friend who lived all the way out in Long Island. I had to drive an hour. So while I was driving, I wanted to hurt myself. I wanted to hurt the kids. I hurt myself with the kids in the car to just let everybody be like, be gone. And I'm like, no, it, it, I'm in this. I bring them here. I, I, I can't do that. So I drove to my friend and I said, take my kids out of the car. And I sit in his living room for like three, four hours just talking and crying. And he said, okay, I see what you're going through. You're suffering from depression. And it's like 12 o'clock now. And he said, go home to your husband and put the kids to bed. And I went home, put the kids to bed, and I kissed them. And I said, you won't see mommy tomorrow. And my daughter didn't understand. So she suffered, she has sickle cell. I don't even know if she remember all of this. She has sickle cell trait, full blown sickle cell, she's sickly. And I took her medication. She has Tylenol, she has a lot of strong medication, morphine. She was about, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know, she was young. And I just went in the kitchen, I kissed them all good night, put them to their bed, to their rooms, and I drink a whole bottle of Tylenol. I took the tablets and I went into my room and I closed my door not bolt the door but I just closed it and I went to bed and I lay on my back on my side and my skin start itching I turn off the lights my skin start itching and I'm like why the heck my skin itching why don't I just sleep and just not wake up about an hour of discomfort not even an hour, maybe 30 minutes of discomfort. I wake up and I look in the mirror. I was swollen. My skin was swollen. And I called my neighbor, Ellen. She was living upstairs. And I told her what I did. And she woke wake up her brother, her son. And they took me to Long Island Jewish Long Island Jewish Hospital. And they admitted me, put me in the psychiatric ward. I was in there for 14 days. I was assigned a nurse for a year to come to my house and make sure I take my medication. Um, after that, I thought I was good. I was feeling good. I don't talk about my problems. I was good. And I remember go to CVS pharmacy and pick up my medication. I see psychiatrists twice a week. I went to CVS to pick up my refill a year later because the doc, the nurse had stopped coming to my house. Sarah Wu, she had stopped coming to the house because I was good. I thought I was good. So I. took out the prescription, took it home, and I sit in my office. I had a, a, a online store, Champo Boutique. So I sell clothes online from home. And I was just crying in my office, and I couldn't stop crying. And I called my husband, he was at work, and I, and I cried, and I was like, I can't stop crying. He was like, are you taking a medication? I said, no. He rushed home, and when he came home, he saw the full bottle and he saw half bottle, which the half bottle shouldn't have been half. It should have been empty. And I have the full bottle. So when he counted out, he was like, you, you haven't taken your medication in two weeks. And I was like, no, I was good. I thought I was good. He was like, no, the medication that you took, it suppresses everything. And I crashed. He called my, psychi my psychiatrist, Dr. Leibowitz, and 
he sent out, you know, an ambulance come. It was like police come, so it's like something bad. But it wasn't that bad. So the ambulance came and they took me back to Zucker Hillside Hospital, admitted me again for another seven days. I was in the psychiatric hospital. So that's a story of my breakdown from depression. Depression is real. It, not because you're black doesn't mean you can't have uh, you can't suffer from depression anyone can suffer from depression you don't have to have kids to suffer from depression the bills alone I've been in Jamaica for nine years eight to nine years and I've seen so many people on the street like they're 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 off they're not off their mind but in clean clothes it happened because when you're just getting there you, you, you don't know what you're saying, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what happened, so you're on the street. So these things in Jamaica is not taboo. People don't hurt you for you to get cuckoo. It's the depression, it, 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 it's, it's your lifestyle, if what, it's what you're going through. Some of us live um, above our means, including myself, and we cannot pay our bills. Um, some of us is kids, for example, my nephew and my niece is here. He cries for every single thing. I do him as I do my kids. I'm not going to hit him. I'm not going to hit my kids. Well, not really hit my kids, but I whoop my kids' ass. But I don't, I don't beat them like old Jamaican beat their kids. I will... Whatever in my hand and my kids fuck with me, I throw, up, throw it at them. Like my cell phone, my house phone. I do that to my husband too. But it's because I was depressed. Okay, since I've gone to the hospital and we have family meetings with the doctors, with my husband, I, I get to understand that. I came to Jamaica, I am not on my medication because I realized not having my kids is my, is my, um, my, my cure. I don't have my kids, not because I'm in Jamaica, not because I get deported. It has nothing to do with me not having my four kids. I don't have my kids because I cannot take care of my kids. I suffer from depression. Postpartum leads to the regular depression. When your kids call you, they say, mommy, mommy, mommy. They don't call you one time, two times, and then you assist them. No, mommy, 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 daddy, 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 auntie, auntie, auntie. My kids, my, my niece and nephew does not do the auntie, auntie thing, but they call their mom often. When my kids come to Jamaica, they call me. They're, I'm teaching them to swim and they get up. Mommy, 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 look, look, I did it. And I was like, call me one time. You know what it do to my head. Just call me one time. If you know I don't hear, call me a second time. I acknowledge you. But don't call me mommy, 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 mommy. That makes my head want to explode. So when mother's out there, crying and feeling pain but the doctor cannot the medication that they take the pain doesn't go away it's depression until you 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 target what causes it it won't go away and you need to help yourself in order to help your kids i've learned that the hard way and i've understand now not having my kids is my cure i love my kids and i love them from a distance so when you have depression, talk to someone. You need to talk to someone. I've seen a lot of parents in Jamaica and a lot of people in Jamaica ask me how I do it. Because I tell them, I, I'm not ashamed. I'm not a fucking shame of my past because my past does not define me. I get fucking deported and it's nothing to me. I never liked Jamaica when I came here, but it's not, it has nothing to do with Jamaica itself, the island. It has everything to do with the people in Jamaica. Everywhere you go, there's good, bad, and the indifference. But in Jamaica, there's like 70% of bad people, bad-minded people. And I, I'm doing Airbnb, and I've seen people with not-so-nice heart. You know, I'm a trying person. I'm single. I live in Jamaica, and I do my Airbnb for my living. And I've seen people come here where this is palace compared to some places. And they came and they complained and they put up notification, they put up reviews of, I was like, aren't you Jamaican? Aren't you my sister? Aren't you my brother? You know, you're supposed to be uplifting me by putting a review, like review of the place, not, 
not, you know, help to build someone, not tear them down. But I'm not going to let that tear me down. I used to take it literally, but my friend Anna said, Champo, don't take that literally. And I've worked through that. I'm not taking it literally anymore. Because you never, you never can satisfy um, people. You can't satisfy everyone. Whew. Even me, I try to grow up my hair. I can't even satisfy myself because when I started out, I tried to twist it. I don't like braids. I, I tried everything. And I never liked my hair because it's just poof. See, it just poof. So I, I, I tried, I went to this store and I, I told this lady at Fontana, I was like, I have this and I need help with it because I don't want it to be poof. She said, if you're growing out natural, it's going to be poof. I was like, I admired other people here. Um, the hair, oh, it's, it's, it's like this. And my daughter, she grew it out and it's like that. But I can't accept mine. And I don't wear braids and I don't wear air tie. So what am I going to do? I don't want a permit. So she gave me some stuff and I put it in and... I washed it yesterday after I came out of the pool and the guy I'm dating came here today and he was like, I love your hair like that. And I was like, Ugh. I'm trying to love it. I'm trying to not twist it and then take it out or try to bump it. I'm trying to just rub the thing in it and just leave it like that. It's soft and nice. The pool water. I don't want to go in the pool anymore. But my niece and nephew wants the pool so bad. But anyways, I, you have to learn to accept what you have. You have to stay away from them kids. Give yourself, talk to people, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, listen when your partner talk. If they are going through distress, listen, help them. You have to help them. You have to help us. We need to talk. When my guy came, come here, all we do is just sit and chat. We chat for a long time. And he was like, why do you talk so much? I said, because this is the only time I get to talk. And you talk back. He was like, you're like a counselor. So when he come, you have to sit down and ready to talk. And he's someone that is a very nice guy. And I like him a lot. You know? And he listens to me. And that's what I like about him. I love that about him. He's the only person I'm dating. I have been dating in the past or so, and he listens when I talk. And I was, I told him about my, my, my life. He knows everything. He listens when I talk. And mothers out there, aunts out there, you need to talk. And you need to also listen when you, 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 you know, talk about your kids. Get an hour a day from the child, from the kids, to clear your head, to um to oh now i've gone back into the thing where i can't remember to yeah to clear your head just go somewhere and sit down and close your eyes and just let your mind take you somewhere else and just do the thing you know because if it wasn't for those doctors and if it wasn't, yeah, for my husband after we go to the counseling, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, I came to Jamaica and I was on my medication and I, and I stopped taking it. It's very expensive. It's $500 in America for a bottle And I don't know how much is it here, but I never take it when I came back because I had enough to, to do me six months. And after I took it, I take it, I went to the, the hospital, the doctor. And I told him and he was like, okay, so he's gonna give, I said, no, that's not what I used to take. I want what I used to take. And they don't have what I used to take. So I was like, no, I don't want it. And I helped myself by talking about it. I'm not afraid to say I suffer from depression. It's something I carry on my, my belt. I have a fractured disc. I suffer from a lot of stuff. I have a lot of problems. I'm on borderline of bipolar. I'm, I, I'm a lot of stuff. And you ask me, I'm going to talk. Because I'm not afraid of it. I'm not ashamed of it. It cannot destroy me. It does not define who I am. I don't remember stuff either. I have fucked up brain from the time I went to the hospital. They give me so much shit, I never remembered anything. I have to tattoo everything on my body, dates and stuff. So that's why when I talk, sometimes I don't remember what I talk. Or I jump from one topic to the next because of what medication does. And I was fat. I was 194 pounds. 
and I came to Jamaica and I lost 50 pounds. Then I gained back a few and I, I'm okay with where am I am. I'm at 170, but I want to go to 150. I'm okay with that. It's getting hot because I turn off the fan. Oh. So please talk about depression. I'm going to see if I could find the number and put it on the bottom of this um, link for depression outline. Talk about it because it's, 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 it's real. Depression is real. It's not something to joke about. It's not. So I know my channel is not for this type of stuff, but it's for anything. And if I, I'm suffering from it, if I suffer from it, I'm going to talk. Because we all need to come together and talk about what we're going through. So guys, it's my bedtime. I go to bed by 9.30. And I was sitting down there watching um, Auntie Dose 2. And I'm, I'm like, I had a discussion last week with someone about depression. And I told the person that it's depression. And, you know, it, it's just been on my mind to talk about this depression thing. So... I talked so please if you will cry too much crying for no apparent reason and the kids are crying. oh one thing if you give your kids what they want when they cry you're fucked okay real quick when I met my husband I was seven weeks seven weeks pregnant seven weeks four days pregnant with my second daughter after I have her Three weeks into my baby being born, he told me to give her water because I wake up and feed her. He said, no, give her water for the three nights. She get water. Night four, she don't wake up. My kids wake up seven o'clock. They get something to eat. By take naps, um, snack their fruits and stuff. In 12 o'clock, I give them lunch, put them to bed. Whether they wake or not, by three o'clock, I wake them up. And by 7.30, it's wind down time getting ready for bed for 8 o'clock, 8.30. That's what I do to my, my niece here. They wake up in the morning, they do the bathroom, and they come out, they want to turn on the TV, no TV. I give them breakfast, and then they get to watch the TV. They're not my kids, their bicycle is not here, no toys here, this is a no kid zone, but I still want to have my nieces here, niece and nephew here. So after they have breakfast, they watch TV, then I give them lunch, snack in between, then I give them dinner. By 7 o'clock, I said, guys, half an hour for shower. 7.30, they go and take the shower. They stay so long in the bathroom by 8 o'clock before they finish. They just love the warm water. So 8.30, 8 o'clock, I give them supper. 8.30, I was like, okay, guys, five minutes before bedtime. So I give them the five minutes. And 8.30, I was like, bedtime. They go to their bed. You have to have time and, and, and boundaries laid out for your kids or else you are going to end up where I end up before. I didn't end up there because I didn't have a schedule for my kids. I end up there because I didn't have anyone to talk to. I was just in the house. My husband is out and there's other stories behind this why I was home alone. Okay? But with that being said, when you have your family around you, there's no help. Sometimes some of them are no help and that's what had happened to me. I never get help from my, my extended family because they just have the mentality of the grandmothers in Jamaica here who wants to be young and wants to do what the young people do and I'm not like that. I don't party, I don't drink. I, 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 I swear, but I don't lie. But there's a lot of things that I'm not going to do and I won't do. So when I have people in my life who want to go out and do the here, do the nails, do the this, do the that, nah, that's not me. So with that being said, read between the lines of everything that I said and have a safe night. Remember to pray. Even if you can't open your mouth to pray, say it in your mind. Uh, it's still a prayer. Ask God to forgive you for the things you have done in the past. Every night, every day you ask him to forgive you and ask him for a better tomorrow have a vision board I have my vision board watch some motivational speakers stop watching those things that not not uh, that are that is not educational we were not too big to learn I'm 43 and I'm never too old to learn okay watch educational stuff watch 
stop watching those things that talks about woman and man and those nasty sex things. I don't listen to those things. I don't go to party. I listen to things without language in it. Yes, I talk with the F word a lot, but that doesn't mean I want to listen to the songs that discriminate people and talk. I listen to a love song. I know how to love and I wish to God one day I find someone who can love me the way oh, I can give back love, you know? And good night. Remember to, to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Be positive, and yes, be positive at all time. Don't harbor negative things and thought in your mind because anywhere there's negativity, you're gonna pull that negative energy. Always think positive. Yo, I don't have rent sometimes. I don't have a light bill sometimes. I don't have food sometimes. Nobody knows, you know? Nobody knows. No, I'll be tagging this. Nobody needs to know, okay? You don't need to, 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 um, to worry about those things. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If they call, I don't have it. What do you want me to do? I don't have it. And that's it. Don't worry about it. Because when you worry, that's a doc doctor bill. Stop worrying about things that you can't help. If you don't have it tonight, today, yesterday, and you don't see a way of having it tomorrow, don't tell the person tomorrow. Just said, I don't have it. When I have it, I'll give you. If you have half, you call the person I have half. Do you want it? You're going to take it because that's what I have. That's what I do. Good night.